Okay, so the first exercise we did was just some toe grabs. And we just did that at 0.2 miles an hour on the treadmill. And he's just trying to grab the treadmill with his toes. So essentially it's just like you're doing it on land with like a towel. But here he's, he's moving and he's just, again that's just getting the intrinsic muscles of the foot working about seven days after surgery. We did that for about two minutes and then the next segment we just did some walking. Started off at one mile an hour and it was just very gently walking, working on his gait, heel to toe. And we kept making him watch the video, making sure that he was touching down with his heel, rolling over to his toe. We did that for two minutes. Then we increased it up to uh, two miles an hour for another two minutes. Again, still emphasizing gait. And then we, the last segment of the walking portion, we sped it up to three miles an hour for another two minutes. And again, this was, this was the first day he was in the water about a week after uh, an ankle arthroscopy. So after that segment, we backed it down to one and a half miles an hour and we just worked on some lateral slides. So Andy's just facing me, he gets down in a defensive position, just like he's you know, playing defense in basketball and we're just working on defensive slides. So we did that for about two and a half minutes one way and then we switched them around and we did about two and a half minutes the opposite way. And then after that, we started doing some backpedaling. So we sped up the treadmill to about two and a half miles an hour. And we just worked on backpedaling. So again, these are all just sports specific exercises needed to return to basketball. And we did that for about two minutes. And then after that, we just slowed, slowed the treadmill down to a complete stop and we just worked on some double-legged hops. And again, since he was just a week post-op, we just emphasized him jumping off of two legs and landing on two legs. All right. For the next segment, um, but he was in here, we just started off for two minutes walking at two and a half miles an hour, just to warm up. Then we started doing some jogging. So we started off jogging, we started him off at four miles an hour, which was just a very light jog. Did that for about five minutes. Then we bumped them up to uh, five miles an hour. And then at this point we turned on the uh, resistance jets and we started them off at 65% uh, resistance. <clears throat> and we did that for five minutes. We just continued progressing, got him up to six miles an hour, still at 65%, then got him up to seven miles an hour, and then we um, increased the jets up to 80%. And then uh, we cooled him down, and that was, that was his workout for, uh, for that day. The third day he was in the pool and obviously we did a warm up. Then we started off with jogging, started him off at five miles an hour for five minutes and then six miles an hour for five minutes. And we did, uh, we did some more backpedaling, lateral slides, double legged hops, and then we did some single legged hops. So this time he's progressed from double legged to now doing single legged hops. Again, still in a pretty much a non weight bearing environment. And then the last two days we had him in the pool uh, before he was able to do really return to the court and perform all his activities 
uh, on the court as far as jumping and running and everything. The last two days he were in the pool, we did sprint intervals. Started them off, obviously we did a warm up, and then the uh, <clears throat> sprint intervals, we started off at seven miles an hour, and we did uh, sprint intervals, he did 30 second sprints, 15 second rests. And again, that, this was all trying to prepare him to get back on the court. Trying to simulate what he would be expected to do on the court during practice. And uh, we had this resistance at 70 miles, an, or 70 uh, percent. So again, he did it for 30 seconds, and then he hopped off the treadmill for a 15 second rest. Okay, hop off. Alright, so you can see he hopped off. Rest him for 15 seconds. And then he hops right back on for another 30 seconds. You know, we did that twice before we uh, increased the speed. Hop off. And this time we got it up to seven and a half miles per hour, still at 70%, and we did still 30 seconds on, 15 seconds off, and we did that for four sprints. Okay, so again, we did that four times. We cranked up the uh, resistance to 80%. We kept the speed at 7.5 and we sprinted still 30 on, 15 off for a set of two. And then we increased the speed up to eight. Kept the resistance at the same. We did that for four sprints. Keeping the treadmill still at 8 miles an hour, we increased the uh, jets to 90% and we did two sprints and then we increased the treadmill up to full speed at 8.5 for four sprints and then the last set of sprints we did treadmill at full speed, jets at full speed for two sprints. And then we did that, we did that same workout day four and day five. <clears throat> and then by that time, after five days in the pool, he was... Uh... Even though we tried to get him off the crutches as soon as possible, and he was able to walk around um, just a couple days after the surgery, uh, it was still a little painful for him to be able to do that. Um, but then when we, when we got, were able to get him in the pool, um, no pain with walking and then even jogging, you know, he was pain free. So, I mean, I think, you know, so his results there were, were immediate that way, right, hey, you know, this is feeling good. The putting in treadmill at a specific miles per hour forces the athlete to stay at that miles per hour. I mean, if they were in a regular pool and they were trying to run in it, you know, they wouldn't stay at a constant five miles an hour, constant seven miles an hour. Um, you know, it would be just, the speed would just vary too much for them to really get an effective workout. So I think the, the, the treadmill, uh, keeping the speed as constant setting was important. And then also just having the camera there too. You know, him being able to really work on his gait him being able to physically see, you know, that one foot compared to the other, he's not touching down with his heel the way he should be, he's, he's um, really just bearing weight more flat-footed than he would be touching his heel, so, you know, that was, that was a big plus, too, with it. So just the, the kind of the biofeedback from, from looking at himself on the cameras uh, helped him out a lot. Well, I think I think that it takes the some of the weight bearing and the forces that 
normally are on that the athlete encounters when they're on land um, takes him out of the picture when you put him in the water. So then that way you can um, you can get their motion going that much sooner. You can get um, get them running partial weight bearing that much sooner than you could um, when they're on land.